Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. We're climbing over 50 participants, which is great. Welcome to Maximizing Colorado Gibbs webinar series. We're going to take 15 to look at what I can do, what you can do with the Colorado Gibbs website. I do want to make sure everybody knows there is a chat window. Jenny's been chatting in that. And I would love to have everybody, just so we know you see the chat window, go ahead and type in the agency that you work for so we can see who all is on the phone with us today. We always love to do that. We are going to record today. And so you will, we will have a recording out there available as we move um, forward. So thank you so much for participating. If you haven't done a Take 15, the way this works is I'm going to talk for 15 minutes approximately, and then uh, we will take questions at the end. So please feel free to type in your questions in the chat window, and Jenny will answer those she can, and otherwise we will uh, take those at the very end. My name is Dana Renderneck. I am the Director of Online Giving at Community First Foundation. As I said, Jenny is on the phone with me. That's Jenny Foxworth. She's our Online Giving Specialist. If you haven't, um, if you're emailing or calling Colorado Gives, chances are you've talked to Jenny. And then the other person on our team is Bryce Wilkinson. He's our Senior Online Giving Specialist, and he's really our data guy. He's very good at that, and we love that, and he's pulling all kinds of statistics. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about, I'm going to go over Giving Tuesday now, just a brief overview of what's going on around that. Then we're going to talk briefly about recurring donations, fundraising pages in honor and in memory of, just making sure you guys realize this is a website that's available 365, 66 this year days, which is great. We have an extra day of giving in uh, 2020. And seeing how you can incorporate this in what the fundraising efforts that you're doing, especially in this crazy time that we're all living through. Let's talk about Giving Tuesday now. So we all know Colorado Gives Day is at the end of the year. This year it is December 8th. I almost said 10th. That was last year. December 8th. And usually the week before is an event called Giving Tuesday. Well, Giving Tuesday looked around at what was going on in the world and they decided we needed to do another giving event in the spring. So they created Giving Tuesday now. It's May 5th. So um, that is uh, Taco Tuesday and uh, also Cinco de Mayo. So we are going to help you guys participate in this. Um, here's some of the information we have live from our toolkit. So we do have a toolkit that's available on the Colorado Gives website. This is the link. So you just go to coloradogives.org, GTN, Giving Tuesday Now Toolkit, and we have several Facebook, Instagram, Twitter images for you, as well as messaging you can use to help you talk about what this event is. It really is a focused day of giving a place to get people excited about what's going on in their community. And because I know donors want to know how they can support you, this is a great way for them to have a focused day to support you. Here's some best practices around Giving Tuesday now. First of all, make a plan. And I know it's crazy. And honestly, this is that's two weeks from today. Today is Tuesday. I know everybody goes through that just like I do. Today is Tuesday, so it's two weeks from today, but make a plan. How are you going to communicate to your donors about this opportunity to give to you? Customize your message. Think about how you're working right now in these crazy times. You're working from home. You're staying safe, but what does your organization need that donors will want to give to you? Make sure you put, include in your plan how you're going to thank those donors and recognize them. Review your donor information from your Colorado Gives report so you can see how, what the donor said about how they gave you, gave to you. Maybe they gave for a specific reason or maybe they just want to support you because they love you. You're their favorite nonprofit. Acknowledge that in the donor thank you note. So look at your information in your report and then review your donor information from that. And make sure you incorporate this into this year's overall fundraising plan. I know several of you have probably had to cancel events this spring, 
So this is an opportunity to reach out to those folks that would have come to your events and talk to them about ways that they could potentially still participate with you and get their friends to participate with you. A couple things you may want to do before May 5th or are first of all, write a short, concise appeal. The appeal shows up on your widget when they search for it. It shows up at the top of your donation page. And that's really a place where you can talk about what you're doing and what you need from donors. So if you're doing frontline support for COVID, that's great. Put something in there. It's not a lot of characters, but let donors know that. If you're not, and I know there are a lot of agencies that are thinking, but I'm not really working frontline, you're still working and you're still needed and you're very important to our community. So tell your donors that. Let them know so that they know how they can support you. We do have the ability for you to customize amounts. If you want to do that, you can see we have not, but you have the ability to say $50 does this, $25 does this, $1,200 does this. You can put that in there. And finally, on your donation page, really look at under donation locations. That's what we call it on the backside of Colorado Gifts, that you have the correct donation opportunities for your donors. Nonprofit discretion is the default, but if you're doing special funds or special things you want donors to give to that you're going to recognize and acknowledge, you can include those in your donation locations. And if you have more questions about this, we are here to help you. Please don't hesitate to email us and you can call too, but email us and we can get this information to you. Uh, make sure your Donate Now button links to your coloradogives.org donation page. I've gotten several emails lately where people are asking about stuff and it's going to their main page on their profile, which is great. But if I'm a donor and I want to give to you, I may want to give directly to you. So put that Donation Now, Donate Now button on your website and link it. It will link directly to your donation page. Just a, some final thoughts on this Giving Tuesday Now. This is not a replacement for Colorado Gives Day. We're still working very hard to support Colorado Gives Day, December 8th. And so it's very important that you understand that this is not a replacement. Donations are not time sensitive. We are not doing any incentives or prizes for this day. It truly is just a focus day for giving. So if a donor can't give on May 5th, but can give on May 6th or May 26th or April 26th, that's great. And we appreciate that and we're very excited about that. And then again, meet your donors where they are. Remember that everybody's in different situations. We have lots of people who have been laid off. We have lots of people that are working and are in there, although working from home, still are doing great. The stock market is crazy, but really meet your donors where they need to be. Part of the effort around Giving Tuesday now is also around volunteering and connecting with your donors in a different way them showing the love for what you do. So make sure you can always include those opportunities as well. All right, let's talk real fast about recurring donations. I think this is a great thing to promote for Giving Tuesday. I think it's a great thing to promote all the time. Recurring donations are really allowing donors to give more in one year. That's what happens for the most part. So if a donor normally gives you $120 and maybe times are tough for them, if they could drop down to $10 or $15 a month, that may make it feel like it's not such a big lift for them at this time. Donors who give recurring donations, so those monthly givers, tend to give longer and give more over their lifetime. And I think this is true right now. I think it's true all year, all the time, but especially right now, paying in installments over time is mentally convenient. It doesn't feel so overwhelming to be able to say, hey, I'm going to give you $10 or $15 a month. This is how it works on the site. Donors can go in, put in an amount, determining, determine if they want to make it recurring. They can determine their first installment date. So maybe I want to go in today and do this, but I really don't want to start it until May 5th. I can do that. I can put in my weekly amount. I can do this weekly, monthly, quarterly, or I can set it up anywhere from seven days to 365. So maybe I get paid every two weeks. I want to set up a recurring donation for every 14 days. I can determine if I want it to end on a specific date 
after a specific number of payments or end after a specific amount or our favorite and the default no end date. So that's just going to be an ongoing donation to you. As you pull your donation report, we have restructured this. We did that last year. I know that was rough on some of you guys, but really when you start looking at it, it makes it much easier. So you can go to the columns AE through AM, and that's going to give you all your donor recurring information. So is it recurring monthly, every 14 days? When did it start? When is it planned to end? Is it supposed to end after a certain amount of payments, after a certain amount? When did it last run? When is it next going to run? And how much have they donated to you total? So it's a great bit of information on these donors that you can pull and look at to learn about the recurring donations. Some top tips on this is maybe name your recurring donation program, develop the value statement of why you're doing a recurring statement, it's great if you're looking at things like perhaps maybe you're doing some kind of capital campaign. I always think it's interesting to come up with a unique amount. So not $25 or $15. If I give $27.77 a month for three years, I've given you $1,000. So think about that. Maybe it's your address. Maybe it's the year you started. Think about things like that. Build a community around your recurring donation program. Think about how you want to do that, suggest levels of giving, and make sure you measure your impact. We're going to go into fundraising pages really fast. This is great for Giving Tuesday. It's also great for year-round. Uh, I know a lot of events have been canceled, but this is a great way for your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. So I used to call these I'm going to run a marathon pages. People who are training for marathons are still going to run those marathons, even if not at a focus event. This increases your donor involvement with you, brings in more first-time donors, drives that immediacy, and focuses giving. Steps to create these are there. It's pretty easy. We have lots of webinars and information around that. Here's what those fundraising pages look like. So they can set a goal. They can put up pictures. You get comments. The key report columns are AN through AQ. So those are your donor report key columns. We have lots of fun information on the nonprofit dashboard for you. Here's what they have. We even have something that talks through how to create a donor fundraising page as a nonprofit. So think about fundraising pages. We say to use these a lot around Colorado Gives Day because this is a great way for your board to get involved. This is also a great way if you have a specific COVID, COVID or coronavirus page that you're trying to support, this is a great way to put that into one place where you can show what you're trying to raise and how, what you're trying to raise it for. And finally, I want to remind you that we have in honor and in memory of gifts. Whew. If a donor makes a gift in honor or in memory of somebody and they put in that person's uh, email, this goes out to them. And you can see it says a gift was made in honor of, from, to, and they can put in a comment. And it also tells them, um, so it's from, I do these for Colorado Gives Day all the time. It's from Aunt Dana to, I tell who the nonprofit is that I gave to, and I tell my nephews that this was a great thing for them to do, um, that I picked this nonprofit for them. There are lots of columns in the donor report around this. It's AR through BE. Those are the columns tied to this. They give you the information around who was being honored or memorialized. If they were notified with an email, the email address, we took care of that. And then there's the note to the recipient. If they decide they want an actual letter sent, which I know you guys do very well, they have the ability to say, no, I don't know their email address, but here's their address. And here's the note. And then the name of the person and the address for you guys to send the a gift was made in honor or in memory of you type of thing. So we give you lots and lots of information around that. Phew. We're right at about 15 minutes and we made it through. I do want to make sure everybody knows that we are here to support you. You can always email us at cogifts at communityfirstfoundation.org. 
That's our phone number. We are still answering phones. Jenny is all hooked in. I have am hooked in as is Bryce. So we are really here to support you guys with any questions you have, anything you need. We are doing a coffee chat on April 30th around this topic and to really talk about what we want to do around uh, Giving Tuesday now if you have questions. So please uh, don't hesitate to register for that. We have decided to take the month of May off for these Take 15 webinars, so we will be doing one in June. And if you guys have a topic you'd like to learn more about, please let us know. So I, with that, I'm going to open up the, I saw the chat window. I'm going to open up the chat window to see if we have anything out there. We are recording this, so it will be available tomorrow. Uh, we are not doing scheduled donations for Giving Tuesday now. So um, just so you know, again, this is not a give day. It's just a focus on where you can give to um, the nonprofit. Any questions? Any more questions? I think Jenny's been answering them pretty well, but I do see some big questions that are helpful for everybody. You can use the logos that are on the Giving Tuesday, but I would recommend you use our logos because it does send them to Colorado Give, and we have personalized it to show that this is a Colorado effort. So there is that Giving Tuesday now for Colorado Gifts, but if you find something on the Giving Tuesday, and I would love to know if you aren't seeing something you want, let us know because we will definitely look at those. The other thing is we're learning a lot with this Giving Tuesday of potential opportunities for Colorado Gifts Day. So, this is an event that's open to every single nonprofit that is live on the site, and we will be putting new, new nonprofits live on the site up until May 4th. Uh, we are working, this is a good question, are we doing any advertising for it? We are working with a, a potential, um, the TV stations in Denver to do this, but we're not doing any focus. You will see a lot because Giving Tuesday, we'll be doing a lot of promoting around this on social media. They really tie this to social media. I will say that I was watching, I shouldn't, I watch Next, and I was watching Next on Friday night, and they actually mentioned that giving that we were looking at uh, nonprofits were looking at a Giving Tuesday now. But again, it will not be the advertising that we would do around a Colorado Gives Day. But the tech, we are updating and up, not updating, upgrading the technology to ensure that we can handle an onslaught of donations. Uh, for those of you that are curious, we did raise $1.6 million in the month of March through the platform. That's three times what we normally make. So that's pretty amazing. So donors are out there giving. So I know, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Any other questions? Anything else you guys are wondering about since you have us on the phone? Well, I guess it's on the webinar. All right, I think we're done. It was really fast. 15 minutes goes way faster than I think it should. It's crazy, crazy. Oh, this is good. I have a question about super fundraising pages. So uh, super fundraising, super campaigns, that's what they're called, sorry, um, are really a combination of uh, other campaigns. So there are things like, and the, uh, um, if you're doing a specific campaign for, let's say, um, you want to want to do a new playground. I'm going to try to keep this generic. If you're doing a playground, playground, and you have eight people doing playground support for you, you can create a super campaign that then shows all the people that are raising money for. Uh, the playground, and then people can get on and just look at that campaign. Um, we do have a couple of uh, questions in the Q&A. 
Are processing fees waived on Giving Tuesday? They are not. We do have one of the lowest rates in the country at 2%, but we that goes to those credit card companies, and so that they aren't waiving those. And um, to clarify, we should be directing donations to uh, Colorado Gives we website or your own. We are happy if you use our website, but if you want to use your own, that's fine with us too, because there aren't any incentives or anything around this. How you guys choose to send donors is completely up to you. But remember, we have 2% processing fee for everything. So that's a great way uh, to support, for your donors to support you. The difference between a super campaign and a regular fundraising campaign is that the fundraising campaigns are the places where people can actually donate. The super campaign just shows you the total goal for the entire program campaign that you're doing. It's almost like you can look at it as a team with, a, and then the fundraising pages are the individuals that are raising for that team. The only difference is you can't give to the team. You have to pick an individual to donate to. And it all goes to your nonprofit, which is fabulous. And I am happy to jump on a phone call to talk about this with specific examples or um, do an email. All right, I think we're good. I'm waiting just to see because it does take a minute to type out these questions. Don't forget that coffee chat if you want to talk about more specifics and more logis logistics, we're happy to do that. And we really are excited. And I really am, I, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and we're looking forward to helping you in any way we can. All right, I think we're good. I'm going to end this, if, but again, if you've come, questions, you can get a hold of us. Thank you so much.